Today we're really excited to share a new product that we're adding to our catalog. And that product is textured wheat protein and it helps us make this brand new plant-based white fish. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. And here on WTF, every week we cover unique ingredients, techniques, and demo new recipes to get you started on your culinary adventures. So remember, subscribe, ring the bell, and you'll get notified of our content. It does come out every single Tuesday. And this week, we are really excited to introduce a new product to our catalog, which is textured wheat protein. I'm really excited to talk about this because we've had textured vegetable protein for a while, but people were like, well, what if I have a soy allergy? So we've looked into finding a really great alternative, as well as um, I know Scott's got something really exciting for you today. So I think maybe where we should start off is just a little bit about textured wheat protein. Um, what is it and maybe how is it different from textured soy protein? Sure. So there's a few differences between textured wheat protein and textured vegetable protein, which is the soy. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one that you're going to notice is the, the strands. So the way this is made, you can definitely see the difference in texture compared to something like the textured vegetable protein. Mm -hmm. So there's more strands to this. So that's going to give us a slightly different texture when we're making something which is good because this is great for burgers, sausage, mm -hmm. all those types of things. But if you're trying to put it into something like a plant-based fish, that's not really the texture we're looking for. We're not looking for those chewy little bits. We're looking for, for like flaky kind of strands. So mm -hmm. that's what we wanted to do. And it also worked great when we replaced it in our um, uh, plant-based chicken nuggets. I was mm -hmm. trying to say textured vegetable chicken nuggets, but that's not <laughs> a thing. Uh, but yeah, our plant-based chicken nuggets. So it works great you know, as a replacement for textured vegetable protein and one thing about it is that it is made from wheat and the okay. protein in wheat is gluten mm -hmm. so it is made of gluten so this is not a gluten-free product but if you want to make one of these recipes let's say that is gluten-free then you could switch it out with the TVP so they're interchangeable in that way yeah and for folks at home who you know are, are really only wanting to buy one particular type what do you, would you say is kind of the textural difference between if they decide to use a texture wheat protein in some of our plant-based ingredients, links in the description below, versus um, the, the uh, vegetable protein that we kind of originally developed them on? So it's really, uh, really simple. <laughs> uh, the, the textured wheat protein, like I said, is a thinner, more fibrous uh, you know, texture, mm -hmm. whereas the textured vegetable protein is those almost like cube-like chewy bits that you would find in, in a burger or mm -hmm. something like that. So that's really the difference. It, you can make all of our recipes with either one of these. They're just going to have slight textural differences. Now, while this is more fibrous, some people may say, well, can we make like a, a chicken breast style, you know, mm -hmm. plant-based uh, meal? Uh, you may be able to if you have a microscope and a ton of time to be able to you know, put piece all these together. Mm -hmm. But this is great for things like if you wanted to make a, a plant-based you know, style pulled pork or pulled chicken okay. for tacos and things like that rather than a ground. So this is more like a pulled texture and this is a ground texture. Yeah, and just kind of taking a bite of this chicken nugget, which um, you know, I've had tons of the, the uh, regular one as mm -hmm. well. They're, they are pretty similar. I will say this one is a little bit lighter. It's not doesn't have that kind of like as chewiness, yeah. but um, overall it's still perfectly tasty. So if you've been kind of holding off because you do have a soy allergy and you haven't been able to try a lot of our recipes, this is a great way for you to get started. Yeah. So, so the recipe that we're going to be making today is a uh, plant-based white fish recipe. Now this has a few things. This starts off with a, uh, a plant-based fish. Uh, that actually does contain tofu, but if you didn't want to use tofu, you can use something else. Uh, you can easily switch this out with uh, just any other type of milk that you wanted to add. So if you wanted to do it with almond milk, you could do that. You just use a little bit less. Okay. So if you are looking for, you know, not having soy in it. Mm -hmm. So this right here is actually uh, developed by Chef Sky, who's a great friend of ours. Mm -hmm. And this is a great recipe because it adds such a, an amazing chew uh, using konjac gum. Mm -hmm. So konjac gum and calcium hydroxide work together to make a really kind of firm uh, gel. So you can see here, you know, it's extremely firm. And this is what we use in our shirataki recipe as okay. well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this into the mixer. So this whole uh, method will be able to be found on our Instagram. 
it would just take quite a while here is you know you blend it you heat it up gently in a pan until it solidifies and then you can place it into here once it's solid so when I turn this on I'm gonna uh, mix it up until it creates little shards almost those flakes that you would find in a white fish mm -hmm. when I do that then I will add in my textured uh, wheat protein and then I can add in my burger binder and burger binder is something that we've used a lot in our plant-based recipes the reason why we use it is that when you heat it up it makes a really great texture uh, for your plant-based meats so I'm just gonna mix this up and you can see it it'll start to break down into little shards quickly mm -hmm. and once I get there then I can add in my textured uh, wheat protein I just don't want to add it too early because I don't want to eventually break these up if it, it beats too long so yeah. I'm get this nice and beat up and what's interesting is that obviously you can't experience this at home, but me standing here, there's actually like kind of a fish aroma in the air right now. Where is that coming from? So that's actually a great question mm -hmm. because when you add the calcium hydroxide to uh, many different things, it alkalizes it because it's a, it's a uh, low on the, I'm sorry, it's high on the pH scale. So it makes it alkaline. And with that comes kind of a fishy aroma. Mm -hmm. Now when you cook this, it's not as prevalent as it is when it is... Uh, raw like this. Mm -hmm. But yes, you do get a little bit of a fishy aroma just when you add that calcium hydroxide. Yeah, it's very uncanny, like it really, really just smells like a, a piece of haddock. And there's different ways that you can add more of a fishiness to this. I think this is plenty for a whitefish because whitefish is very mild. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to increase that just to, you know, make it a little bit more fishy, you could obviously uh, take some kombu and then, you know, in your water mixture you could put the kombu, which is just a seaweed, a kelp, mm -hmm. that could give it a little bit more of like that oceany aroma. So mm -hmm. I'm just gonna mix this up quickly, just for about five seconds, just to mix those through. Yeah. And then I'm gonna add in my burger binder. So from here, I add in my prehydrated burger binder. This is about 200 grams to the entire recipe. So quite a bit. And then once I get this, mix it in. And it's really that simple. After you make that initial uh, you know the base the, mm -hmm. the fish base then this part is so simple especially if you're using the burger binder for other things mm -hmm. once you have it then you can just take it out and pop it in here that burger binder lasts you know pretty much forever okay right it, especially if you pop it in the freezer it's gonna be great for a long time mm -hmm. so I mix this up and you can see it makes like this Let me just get some of this off there this yeah. paste so this paste then will go into a mold and then we steam it. If you don't have a steamer, you can easily put this into a mold and just cover it in foil and then you know, bake it at a low temperature in the oven until it reaches about 120, 130 degrees. At that point, it's firm enough to take out. You can slice it and shape it. I like to shape it into things that look like a little bit of uh, you know, fish fillets. Mm -hmm. Also, any scraps I like to take and then you can beer batter them and fry them. Ooh, it works okay. really great that way too. So if you, even if you wanted to use the batter from those, uh, the plant-based nuggets, you can put it on these and make like a really great kind of fish and chips. Yeah. So we actually have some that's finished, so we can make a little plate here. So I'm going to start with a little bit of just green beans blanched with a little saute on them, kind of a, a classic baked haddock dish, mm -hmm. right, from my early days of cooking. But generally you can't have it plant-based because all the plant-based fish out there isn't great. Nope. But we find this one to be amazing because of the flakiness so yeah. Ooh, right, look at that do two little pieces here mm -hmm. obviously you can make the pieces whatever size you want and they don't lose much size when they're cooking so they start like this they lose about you know maybe about 10 percent but also this will be nice and uh, delicate so mm -hmm. when you're handling it it's similar okay. to fish where you'd be you know you're delicate with it and then you put the the crumbs on top a little bit of white wine in the pan mm. bake it off and then you have a really great uh simple dish so there's a fork there jane okay so if and if you you're super it. excited about this recipe remember the links are in the description below right you can see how flaky it comes off there yeah it, that's what it looks like <laughs> mm. hmm. So it took a little bit of time to kind of, mm. you know, wrap my head around how do I make something flaky mm -hmm. that is plant-based. But I think taking these two recipes, the burger binder with its great, you know, uh, chew, and then you add in the, mm. uh, you know, the fish base, and it just really makes a great recipe. And then you get those little bits of the textured wheat protein that give mm -hmm. you that, that um, 
almost that fibrous texture that you get from fish. So I'm really excited about this recipe. Yeah, and I can see how, you know, if you just play around with the spices a little bit, you can make it into a crab cake, yep. obviously fish sticks, you know, there certainly opens up a whole new world to the things that you want to do in your meat analogs, mm -hmm. right? So we're pretty excited about it. Definitely give it a shot. If you've already got most of our well other recipes, uh, I think the only new thing that you will probably need is the texture wheat protein to mm -hmm. get this exact texture. What would happen if they tried to make this exact recipe with the texture of vegetable protein? So it would work. Mm -hmm. It's not that it would not work. It would just have a, a different texture. Mm -hmm. These give that, like I said, that chewy little bits, mm -hmm. right? So I, I'm not sure what you would equate it to, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's the same as like a white fish like this. Okay. It would be just like this and just have chewier little bits to it. Okay, but definitely if you've given it a shot or if you have anything else that you would like to see we cover here in WTF in the future, remember to leave your comments, leave your questions. We do love hearing from you. You can catch this recipe video. It'll be up on this channel later this week. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garen. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chefs, tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, We'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences. <laughs>